so in this lecture of biomechanics we are going to study the mechanical loads on the human body that are included in the chapter 3 of biomechanics as according to Susan J. Hall so basically mechanical loads on the human body is the that forces that act on a body to change the human body uh, structures functions and fun functionally and affects their uh, affects the body part or human body so basically uh, muscle forces gravitation force for example if we are taking the example uh, of a person who is going on a sky so if a person is going on a sky so what is the situation that he uh, uh, if he encountered any accident so what is the uh, forces that act on them that are included the muscle forces gravitation forces bone breaking forces that are all included in the mechanical loads on the human body but they act differently person to person they are going to be very because every person has a different body structure mass their pressure the force act uh, on a different direction different duration magnitude because the force depend on the direction duration and the magnitude basically okay first we are going to see in the mechanical loads are the compression then after the tension and the shear so basically if we say like that the compression is the force that is like if we compress or press anything like this pan so if we press this pan so this is basically the compression force Compression is pressing or squeezing force that is uh, applied axially from above to below they are applying. So like that they are called compression force. So basically if we say that compression can be thought of an squeezing force uh, based, uh, on a body on a, any body. So this is called compressing or squeezing force. An effective way to um, or basically if we take an example of a flower uh, if we take an a flower and um, put inside the pages of a book and place a stack of other books on top of that book so what is going to be happen they are going the weight of the books create a compressive force on the flowers that produces a compression and basically the squeezing force that the uh, compress the floor in a simple or in a what we say is a simple ha has a flat surface they are uh, making the flower on a, on a flat or in a flat um, shape or shape like that so basically that is the first example of compression the second one is basically if you say that uh, the weight of a body that is totally is a compressive force because our bones which work on uh, to support our body the weight of our body is a compressive force on that bones so basically first we have to write that what is the definition of the compression so compression or squeezing force directed axially through a body is called compression so what is compression is pressing or squeezing force directed axially force directly directed axially through a body axially through a body is basically called compression So basically if we say that this is like that uh, if we actually means basically compressed from above to below below from uh, below to above that is basically the we call as the compression or inward or outward forces uh, inward forces that we apply basically compression is the inward force from below or from the above so this is compression <laughs> after that we are going to see what is tension okay tension is basically if we say what is tension tension is basically the the force that is opposite to the compressive force that means they also 
move axially but they are pulling or stretching force like that this is a compressive and opposite like this is the tension if we open or if we pull anything outward outward in a direction that is called tension so basically if we say that stretch that we apply on any muscle that is called tension so basically uh, stretching is a compressive topic so we cannot discuss in a detail but i will tell you what is basically stretching uh, stretching is basically like uh, if you say that uh, uh, my uh, first we have to write the definition what is the definition of tension tension is the opposite and the pulling or squeezing uh, stretching force sorry stretching force directed axially directed axially through a body through through a body so basically uh, now we are going to see what is tension so basically that is opposite of compressive force as we have discussed that they are moving in opposite direction uh, because they are pulling or stretching force so basically if you take an example uh, like uh, uh, like a so the as we uh, have taken the example that uh, as we have taken the example of a child that sits in a playground swing basically the swing is connected uh, uh, with the pole uh, through a chains several chains so basically if we see the when uh, when the child wait or when we push or uh, sorry when we uh, pull the okay when child pull the um uh, when child weight apply on the swing their chains produce a tension and because of the chains their uh, swing is going to be moved that is the first example uh, because uh, the heavier child creates even more tension in the sports of the uh, swing because they can easily move this swing because the pull, uh, stretching force pulling force is a uh, high for um, is high uh, is the higher apply or uh, is apply higher uh, or more force than the child that has low weight so basically uh, muscles uh, that are attached to the bones are also produce a tensile force uh, tension is also called tensile force like that if we take a pen and for example if the pen is like Mm, so this is the lame but uh, we have taken like that example so that is like uh, if we taken the pan so now the now the third category of the force is going okay okay now the third category of the force is going to be the shear so shear is basically a force okay okay first we have to see what is uh, we have taken the example of a joint uh, that, that that is attached to a muscles uh, that uh, their muscles are going to be attached like that uh, the they are attached with any muscle so they also produce a tension but if we take on that a shear force so shear force is like that um basically if we say that shear force is uh, like that if we apply compressive and tensile force act along the longitudinal axis of a bone so shear force acts parallel because compressive and tensile apply on a axle or longitudinal axis of a bone or uh, other structure to which they are applied but shear force acts parallel or tangent to the force so basically shear force is like that if we take an example or if we uh, take a simple um, object any object that uh, like that uh, okay we have taken the example so 
so from uh, if we day if we say that from above the direction of the um, uh, the direction of the force is in, in this direction and the other direction or from lower side the direction of applying the uh, which we uh, the force we apply is in the opposite direction so basically two opposite forces when act on an object or any object they produce a shear force that is we also called as a slide force displace force because one portion is slide on the other por uh, for portion that simply means the shear force so shear force is like that if uh, if we say that uh, shear force acts parallel or tangent to the uh, surface so basically um, that is re really reliable because tangent as we know or as we all discuss in uh, in physics and in every physics physical subject that uh, that includes the tangent of the surface so now if we say that we have taken another example like uh, this is also uh, this is a one box but we have to divide it into two so we can easily uh, discuss in that so like the above part is going to be uh, the force there the arrow shows the force of both direction this is like in this direction another one is opposite direction so basically the object or the parts of the object is going to be slide on each other so going is this is basically the displacement this uh, this is the force that act on any uh, thing that produce any displacement or sliding force so force directed parallel to the surface is basically called shear force surface is called shear okay now if we take an example in our human body uh, like a force acting at a knee joint in the direction parallel to the tibial plateau in a shearing force at running for example this is the first we have to write that what is compressive and tension is in it uh, tension force in longitudinal axis mm, basically longitudinal axis of bone or the structure that we, on which we apply so basically they act on a longitudinal axis and the other is going to be apply uh, sorry shear force is the axon acts parallel or tangent to the surface basically tangent surface shear force act at any surface as parallel or tangent so basically if we say that uh, like uh, if we take a uh, circle basically a simple object in a round or uh, round object like that and the tangent is basically uh, basically they even they apply on a parallel or they have making a tangent like uh, like this so basically as we have discussed in detail in previous classes so cannot go into detail in a tangent so basically tan tangent is like that they are similar to parallel but they have a different uh, um they are with very dis um, okay now we are going to see in a human body example as we have taken like if a person is going to be uh, is landing from a sky jump so during the landing from a sky jump the force that um, going to be impact on the person's body is includes a component of anteriorly directed shear on a tibial plateau that elevates stress on the anterior crochet ligament for example uh, if we say that a person is going to be uh, jump from a, a sky jump so their um, their position is not in a straight when they are going to be land their position is like little bit of um, or the position is if we draw like uh, okay see ok 
okay a person is going to be if a person is going to be land so uh, the uh, up, uh, the upper egg upper leg is going to be like that this is the um, knee joint that is going to be the tibia that is going to be a fibula oh sorry sorry femur uh, that is not a fibula that is femur basically that is femur okay that is femur uh, that is tibia and the mid uh, knee joint bear which is called the patella so basically when a person is going to be lie uh, sorry land then there um, because of the force that is applying on the uh, the force is applied in the direction of this like simply if we say the forward direction so because the uh, force that applies in a forward direction they act on an anterior cruciate ligament so basically the maximum stress is applied to anterior cruciate ligament because of because of because of the uh, femur but that is not only applied due to femur the tibia is also move on a backward direction not full but a little bit of tibia because the balance is wanted because we want the balance to land from the that direction so basically the femur is going to be in a forward direction and tibia is going to be moved slight in a uh, backward direction so basically they both of them going to be form an direction uh, the force that is parallel to each other so the force is called the shear force like that is going to be on a forward direction as we say as we have discussed and tibia is going to be in a backward direction simply the patella so the knee joint and the anterior cruciate ligament has got the maximum stress on that and because of that they may be on some cases they going to be like this way. so i have made the clear diagram so you can easily see Femur apply forward direction, uh, force on a forward direction, and tibia apply force on a backward direction. So simply this is like that. So as we have discussed in detail, like that is patella basically. So anterior shared ligament is maybe sometimes going to be uh, due to elevate stretch. They are going to be there or something damage or injury cause on it uh, that. So basically this is all about mechanical loads.